So a conservator helps make objects more accessible to the public by making them able to withstand display in the museum. I'm Morwenna Stevens and I'm a conservator based here at RAM. Conservation is really about preserving the collections in the best ways possible. And a large part of our work is actually something we call preventive conservation or collections care. So trying to make sure that things don't deteriorate. And as a textile conservator, that's something that I come across a lot in the southwest of England because we have very damp and mild conditions. There are a lot of carpet beetle and clothes moth and their larvae really can cause a huge amount of damage to wool, fur and feathers. So this dress was cleaned first using a dental vacuum, so very controlled light suction, and then the areas of damage have been encased in a very fine net to prevent further deterioration and loss. So there's just a very fine net stitched across the whole of the split silk lining. And then the cuffs were rather grey and grubby looking and so they've been wet cleaned and that released um, kind of yellow and grey soiling and then where some of the border was um, detached that's been restitched back into place using a very fine curved beading needle and a very fine thread. Another important part of the work has been preparing the mannequin. So um, we start off with a papier mache man mannequin, which is smaller than the dress, because obviously it's important that um, we don't put any strain on the dress. So for the 18th century, a uh, dress like this, an open robe, would be worn with a stomacher. And unfortunately, the original stomacher wasn't in a condition to be used. So we've recreated a stomacher out of acid-free card and silk that's been dyed in the museum. Dresses at that period would have a um, relatively flat front but quite large hips and this is achieved through use of net to create volume and um, some boning in the base petticoat but then something we call pocket hoops and they are worn underneath the net um, petticoats. We then put a top petticoat of silk over the, all the other under layers. And similarly, the sleeve supports are covered in silk to make sure that they slide onto the, into the garment without catching. More complex costumes like this very fine, high status, uh, inexpensive costume, what I'm aware of is all the different people who have contributed to it. So there's obviously the designer designing the silk fabric, there's the weavers weaving that fabric, the dyers. So on this dress, for instance, all the trimmings really match the colours in the fabric. And so that involves a lot of people with a lot of skills coming together to produce everything that makes up the garment. Occasionally some damage will occur when things are on loan. So here there's been a, a small amount of damage where some beading has come loose. So these are Native American moccasins from the World Cultures collection at RAM. We have the hide, which would be indigenous, but traded material. So traded wool, which could well be from the West Country, particularly this fine red broadcloth, and then glass beads, possibly from Bohemia. Fortunately, all the material is here, and so I'll look at what kind of thread to use and how to anchor the stitches and then reinstate the, the beading. So when I visit museums and see costume on display, one thing I'm drawn to is the costume and the fabric, the textures, the colours, and those were some of the factors that drew me into textile conservation in the first place. So I actually studied psychology for my first degree but realised I was especially interested in textiles. I really love conservation because every project is different. Sometimes we have to deal with the less savoury aspects like sweat uh, deterioration and so on. But at the same time, you really sense that these were used by people who lived generations ago. And that's very exciting to be able to bring us closer to the stories that the costumes and objects can tell.